Hello, in this video we're going to do a proof. We have a function f from g into h and we're told it is a group homomorphism and we're going to prove this equation here f of e sub g is equal to e sub h. Let me briefly explain this. So by a group homomorphism we mean a map that has the property that f of xy is equal to f of x times f of y and this has to be true for all xy in our group g okay and we have to prove that if you apply f to e sub g this is the identity element in g it's going to be equal to the identity element in h okay let's just jump into the proof right away and so this proof uses some knowledge a uh, very very basic group theory and I'll explain it uh, as we go through through the proof okay so let's just start by writing down f of eg so note we're gonna do a little trick here so note f applied to the identity element in g f of e sub g well this is actually equal to we can we want to write this in a way that's going to allow us to use this right so how can we take one element and turn it into two? Because here we have an x times y, and here we just have one thing, right? Well, it's the identity, so it's special. So what you can do is you can write this as e sub g times e sub g. Okay, because e times e is e. And this is, you know, because e is the identity. So I'm going to say, actually, I'll write it over here. So I'm going to say because e sub g is the identity let's put id in g okay that's why that equation is true and then this is equal to f of e sub g times f of e sub g and this equation is true this is because f is a group homomorphism group homomorphism homomorphism what a fun word right homomorphism and so now we basically have f of eg equal to this so note use note again I should have used a different word <laughs> no this is actually an element in H, I'm being really pedantic here, and H is a group, so it's closed under inverses. So that means that the inverse exists. So F, e.g. inverse, is an H. It exists. Hence, what we can do now is we can multiply both sides by this element because it exists. So remember, we have an equation. We have that this is equal to this. So I'm going to multiply, how about on the left? So we have f of eg inverse times f of eg. And I'm showing all the steps here, which is not something you often see. Like if you look in a book, they're usually skip steps. So I thought, let me just show like every little step. And then so here we have f of e sub g inverse times this product, right? f of eg e sub g rather f of e sub g so on the left hand side because these are inverses and they're elements in h you're going to get the identity element in h okay on the right hand side you're going to use associativity so using associativity and again being really pedantic here i mean most people would just cancel these but let's just let's go through it it's good to be rigorous sometimes. Okay, so we have that there. All these little subscripts are fun to write. And then here we have f of e sub g. And again, um, these are inverses, so you're just gonna get you're just gonna get e sub h. So e sub h is equal to e sub h. And this is f of e sub g. So, but again, um, 
this is the identity element in H. So this is just going to be E sub H equal to F of E sub G. And I'm saying things in words. So like if you're watching this video and you happen to be like taking a class and like, you know, you're trying to do this for homework or something, make sure you write everything I'm saying down in words. Like, you know, this is, this is because, you know, E is the identity element in H, et cetera. So I'm just going to write it one more time. So we have F of E sub G is equal to E sub H. And that completes the proof. Okay, that completes the proof. So it's pretty simple. Basically, you get here, and then you just multiply by this guy here, by the inverse. And then on the left-hand side, you just get E. And on the right-hand side, one of these cancels, and you just get, you're left with, you're left with this one here. And that completes the proof. So pretty simple. So homomorphisms, uh, they they take the identity and they map it to the identity. That's that's the key, right? So if you have a group homomorphism and you plug in the identity, it's going to give you the identity every time, which is pretty cool. Hopefully this video has helped you uh, understand this proof a little bit better. And if you've seen this proof before in a book or something, um, you know, a lot of times they don't have all these steps. Like this is something that, you know, I've never seen in a book. So, but it's important, right? Like this exists because this is an, an element in this group and groups are closed under inverses. Therefore, this element exists. Therefore, we can write it down. And so you can multiply both sides. Also, when you multiply both sides, notice how I chose to multiply on the left. You don't want to mix and match them, right? Choose one or the other. Um, we don't know, um, you know, if, if, if things are abelian or not and stuff like that. So, but yeah, hopefully this video has been helpful to someone out there. Until next time, good luck.